Thanks, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Have a chair. Thank you. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Rice? Lieutenant Rice reporting as ordered, sir. At ease, Lieutenant. Then Mr. Bardell, the Office of Naval Intelligence. Rice. William T. What's the T stand for? Tiberius, sir. Tiberius? Yes, sir, Tiberius. Family name? Well, no, sir. He was one of the Caesars. My father picked it because he thought that... Tell me about your father. What does he do? Look, uh... Sit down, Lieutenant. Answer the questions, please. Yes, sir. When you were at Annapolis, you were the subject of a personnel security investigation. Why? I needed top secret clearance because I wanted to take some courses in infrared detection, sir. One more question. What is a differentiator? It's a form of sensory element. A form of? I could get more out of a 25 cent science magazine. If you ask me a more definite question, Mr. Bardell, I shall give you a more definite answer. Would you do a job for us, Lieutenant? Strictly voluntary? That depends on the nature of it, sir. There's a testing site, ground to air missiles, up the coast, Point Amador. I've seen it from the highway. Do you think you could pose as a civilian technician? You haven't answered my question yet. This job's a routine security check of the entire installation, that's all. No trench coat, no back alleys, just a report of what you observed during next week's schedule of tests. You can use your own name, Mr. William T. Rice. You can even keep Tiberius if you want. We will supply you with an employment covering the past few years. It's as simple as all that. Well, that's all fine, sir. Suppose I run into someone I know. You won't. We've checked. Now, may I have an answer? Sir, if you wanted me for something that was really important... Fine. We appreciate your help, Lieutenant. Well, you're not taking my word the job is important? Report to Division G2 at 0800 tomorrow morning, Lieutenant. They'll have your background material ready at that time. Yes, sir. Anderson Electronics. Do I have the keys to your trunk, sir? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, look, uh, what's the problem here? I've got the uh, proper identification. It's 
Star search is routine, sir. Mind if we check out your suitcase? Well, why not? Sir? Thank you. Major Morrissey, the security officer, will be back from the cafeteria at 1330 hours. That's 1.30 p.m., sir. He'll provide you... He'll provide you with temporary IDs, which you'll need here on the base. We'll take care of your car, sir. Dr. Denning, Mrs. Morrissey. Major Morrissey wants to see you as soon as you got back, sir. What does the Iron Duke say I did this time? There is the regulation about signing out if you're going to plan on eating off the base, sir. Does that include drinking off the base? Yes, sir. Trapped again by your FBI. I can walk to the Ad building from here. You have your ID badge, sir? Sir, if you have lost your ID badge again, I'll have to report it. And submit it to the security officer for review. I know. Well, you just do that. Carry on, Corporal. Sorry, Mr. Rice. I'll arrange for an escort right away. Any place I can take the gentleman, Corporal? A security officer escort, Mrs. Morrissey. Major Morrissey's orders. Sorry. Well, that's the best offer I've had this week. The week isn't even over yet. Are you here for the tests, Mr... Rice, Bill Rice. I'm a systems engineer, maintenance. Laura Ann Morrissey, human factors engineer. Actually, I'm in personnel. I just thought people processing time cards ought to have pretty titles, too. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that. And if you stretch that a little bit, it could be my best offer this week. Well, if I want to find you, it's uh, Morrissey, like in Major Morrissey. That's right. Just like in Major Morrissey. Your escort is ready, sir. Good luck with the Major. Thank I'd you. I hate to lose you so soon. This Marine will show you to the security office. OK, thank you. Thank you. I can't come to work, I can't leave, I can't do anything without the ID badge. That's correct. I'll order another one made up for you immediately. I knew you'd be helpful. Well, since I'm without approved identification, do I need an escort to accompany me back to Lab C? I don't think that'll be necessary. Thank you, Major. I have another photo ID badge made up for Dr. Denning. Another one, sir? Another one. Mr. Rice? Yes, sir. Why don't you go in? I'll join you in a moment. Thank you. authorization on you doesn't say how long you're going to be with us. Oh, uh, just for the duration of the guidance test, uh, cycle six, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Everything here, Top? Yes, sir. All of Mr. Rice's identification papers, his tempo pass, and his badge. That's for your signature, sir. Why don't you sit down, Mr. Rice? This will take a moment. Uh, that's a fine picture gallery you have there, Major. Korea, Vietnam, Fleet Marines. And this. Of course, in the military, Mr. Rice, we uh, go where we're ordered. Oh, I see you were raised in Indiana. Oh, that's right. I'm a Hoosier myself. Born and raised in Hamden. You know where that is? Oh, uh, that's up by College Point, isn't it? Yeah, it does say here you went to university up there. How long have you been with Anderson Electronics? Well, not too long, about uh, six months. And you must know they had a personnel over there, Mr. Uh... What's his name again? Oh, I, I never met him. I, I was hired outside. 
Oh, by Mr. Schaefer. Mr. Schaffner. Mr. Jeff Schaffner. Excuse me, sir, but you do at the commander's office now. All right. The top here will uh, issue your passes and help you with the rest of the paperwork. Well, good. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Major. I, uh, I guess that Major was quite a fighter, huh? Is quite a fighter, Mr. Rice. As they'll soon find out around here. Now, you'll be required to wear this at all times on the base. And have your identification papers ready for inspection at any time. There are also other security restrictions. Itemize it on the top page. There's also a list of off-base accommodations that are approved by this office. Hmm. Approved accommodations, huh? That's right, sir. Well, anything else, like uh, approved girls or books, restaurants? You'll find recommendations there, from the treatment of classified documents to the handling of your personal mail to your telephone conversations. 1984. Hmm? Well, that's a book I once read, Sergeant. Oh. There's been a number of security leaks on this base in the past few months. I suggest that you read the Major's list very carefully, Mr. Rice. You'll be working with some people who'd wish they had. And welcome to Point Amador. <laughs> OK, well, uh, thank you, Sergeant. Right, you got a place you're fixing to stay? No, I uh, came right here when I came in this morning. But you got your approved list of accommodations from Morrissey. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Alex says Morrissey's planning to take the YMCA off the approved list. Seems he heard it had been infiltrated. Who's Alex? Alex Denning, our project engineer. He's the greatest. Oh, yeah, I uh, heard his name mentioned when he drove through the gate this morning. In case you've got any questions, he's one of the three youngest PhDs to make it through Caltech. Hey, most of us bachelors bed down at the Carlton Lodge. It's a uh, pretty comfortable place, despite the fact that Morrissey approves it. <laughs> Then after you're checked in, why don't you stagger over and join us at the countdown? It's a few miles further out in the highway. Is that on the approved list? Definitely not. Well, then I uh, can't afford not to make it. <laughs> See you guys later. All right. Bill! Rice, come on over. Bill Rice? I'd like to meet uh, Betty. This is Betty. Angie. You know Frank. No, Bill, how are you? Laura? Alex is the fellow I was telling you about. Bill, this is Dr. Alex Denning. Nice to meet you, Doc. Dig yourself up a chair. I understand you're on loan to us from Anderson Electronics, Mr. Rice. I mean, what's the going rate for PhDs in math out there in the free world? Oh, come on, Alex. No, come on, I want to know. Just give me the bottom dollar on the open market. <laughs> well, that's a little out of my league. I, uh, I'm just a maintenance engineer. I know just what you are and just what you do, Mr. Rice. I know the exact function of every man on this project. Gentlemen, a toast to Mr. Rice. The only man here who is not feeding out of the government trough. Mm. Pardon me, Major Morrissey. Don't you approve of our mascot, Mr. Rice? No, uh... Not particularly. And you approve of them, don't you, Laura? 
A Major Morrissey doll. You wind him up. Shut up, Alex. Waiter. Yes, sir. The Major here wants to order a round of drinks for his troops at the bar. Why don't you send him a round of uh, black Russians? <laughs> no, no, make it beer. Marines always drink beer, don't they, Laura? Will you drop it, Alex? I'm going to toast to Major Morrissey and all of his fledgling angels who are even now watching over us. Excuse me, I uh, might be a little out of line, but you are Mrs. Morrissey, right? That's right. Pardon me? What's all this? Compliments of Dr. Denning. Thanks for the drinks, Doctor. Well, if you want to go home, ma'am, I'll have one of the boys take you. No, I'm not going home. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Oh, Thoroughlof, buddy. I'll go, Sergeant. sitting on that table in there. You didn't seem to think it was very funny. It made me uncomfortable with you sitting there. Look, maybe you think this is out of line, but I didn't like them making a joke out of your husband. My husband's dead. He was killed in Vietnam two years ago. Major Morrissey's my father-in-law. I better take you home. Come on. Where do you live? I live with the Major. We live right on the base. We couldn't find more approved housing. Didn't take you long to get with them, did it, right? I was right? just about to take her home, maybe. Sure you were. The sergeant called and said you weren't feeling well. I'm feeling wonderful. Now you hear this. You people have all the fun you want to with me, but you stay away from her. Come on. This is range safety. Target approaching southeast safety limit. Traveling a course of 287 degrees. Speed, 517. Altitude, 19,000. We'll cross into safe area in two, two seconds. Out. Pulse acquisition radar locked. This is target control. Target is in safe area. Starting evasive maneuver. Safe to fire. Safe to fire. CW acquisition radar locked. Range radar locked. Illuminator one locked. Illuminator two locked. Able battery control out. Start reject phase. Ten. Nine. Thank 
Tackling, phase one. Start interrupter on Mark. Stand by. On the mark. Stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. Recycling. Phase two. Stand by. Cease firing. Cease firing. On the button, Doc. Larry, what coating did you use in the last two shots? A sequence of eight and a sequence of twelve. That's not enough of a spread. Uh, start from twenty-four down, then you can't overshoot. Maybe if we realign to odd sequences now, we'd zero in faster. Yeah. Then we save a shot that way. Have one extra for tomorrow when we need it. That's good. Is it good enough to call a break for lunch? We've only got five minutes before the cafeteria closes. OK, pass along. Break for lunch. Bryce? Yes. Have any trouble getting Laura home last night? No, no trouble. Bryce, you're okay on the reject phase, but pick it up a little on recycling, okay? Fine, Doctor. Unlocked and unattended. Mark that. Mr. Rice, I didn't see you there. Major? Uh, you can check out the rest of them. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea who's responsible for leaving that file unlocked? Uh, well, uh, sir, I was here. I, I guess I'm responsible. It's been a long time since I've heard those words around here. And you don't have to call me sir. You sound like a man just recently out of the service. Yeah, well, it uh, hasn't been too long. Maybe that's why Lori likes you. She does, you know. And she told me that you were really taking her home the other night when I busted in with the wrong idea. I'm sorry. I, I understand. She doesn't take to people much since, uh, well, not the right people, that is. She's, uh... What I'm trying to do is ask you if you'd like to come to dinner tonight. Now, how about it? Well, I'd, uh... I'd like that very much. Good. Seven o'clock, my house. And, uh... Underneath the major, it's Matt. Get the names of everybody responsible and have them report to my office at 1700 on Saturday for a security lecture. Yes, sir. I tell you, these scientists are a breed apart. Just this afternoon, Sergeant Curtis and I found 87 security violations in the lab and test stations alone. Of course, I, I had to overlook half of them. I always do. Otherwise, I'd have every scientist here on report. <laughs> you, you're different. I'm different. You wouldn't believe some of the oddballs that Laura knows. Can't put my finger on it, but you're different. Oh, coffee. Let me help you. Y'all finished? Well, I wasn't, but I better quit. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Whew. It's good. Oh. May I have some more wine, please? 
I think I'll have a touch myself. Are you uh, making any headway in finding out about the security leak? Security leak? Yeah, somebody mentioned one the other day. You wouldn't care to tell me who? I didn't think so. Well, maybe it's just negligence. I'd like to buy that. But there's a definite pattern involved here, an intelligence behind what's being taken. Matt. I get the message. You two are anxious to be off on the town. All right, Bill and I'll have our coffee in the living room, and you go get freshened up. Hmm? I'll just be a minute. Take your time. Come on, Bill. She's an awfully good cook, that girl. Isn't she, though? Here, you better carry this. There uh, should be a newspaper around here somewhere if you want to check the local movies. Oh, no, thank you. Navy Cross, huh? My sons. You must have been real proud of him. Proud? I was proud. I'm still proud. You understand that? Interesting, most people come in here and look at this and say, what a waste, what a shame. But I keep it here because I want to remember. I want to be proud. Can you understand that? Yeah, I think so. Maybe you have to be a part of the Marine Corps before you really know. People look at me around here like I ought to be put away with the Zeppelin commanders. <laughs> this is Terry and Laura on their wedding day. I uh, gave her away. Sergeant Curtis was best man. It was kind of a do-it-yourself uh, wedding. We put it together as best we could. Terry was shipping out in about three days. I'm ready. Hey, you look wonderful. Thank you. Good night, Matt. Thanks for dinner. You're welcome. Come back again soon. I will. Have fun, you two. Does that shock you? No. Do you feel like you just danced on a hero's grave? Laura, your husband died doing the one thing he wanted to do, being the one thing he wanted to be. It was his choice. It was a tragedy, yes, but it was part of the package that he bought. Maybe there are worse tragedies. Maybe dying for something is better than living for nothing. Thank you. We can go now if you'd like.
If uh, you don't need me anymore, Doctor, I'll be going. Well, I don't want to intrude on your evening's entertainment, Rice. Good night, Doctor. Rice, I'm sorry. That's all right. You seen Laura again? Bill. Laura asked me to stop by. She's going to be a little late. Want you to pick her up at the ad building? Oh, good. If you see her before I do, tell her I'll be there in ten minutes. Glad to. Doctor, how's it going? Don't let me keep you, Major. I suppose you'll be securing this place for the night? Well, I suppose so, but... You know how untidy I am about that. Classified waste hasn't been taken out. You better have somebody to it. I'll give you an idea, Major. Why don't you have some of your junior thought police handle it? Keep him off the streets for a while. Well, I'm on the way out. I'll get it. Leave it alone, Rice. There's nothing in there except some meaningless scribbled notes. How can you be so sure they're meaningless? All it takes is one little slip to sink a ship, right? Except we're doing more than just sinking ships now, Major. We're pressing buttons and vaporizing cities. When's the military mind going to put away its paper clip requisition forms and realize that? There are procedures, Doctor. Essential procedures. They may not seem important procedures. to you. Procedures. There's that word again. I don't make up the rules. My job is to enforce them. I don't see why it has to become personal. I have to because you're there. Six feet of military righteousness that's doing more to impede this project than a dozen trained saboteurs. Just take my work with me and you can lock and double lock, Major. You are cleared for locking up, aren't you? Where are you planning to take those papers? Go back to my approved living quarters at the luxurious Carlton Lodge. I'll try to make some sense out of the schedule of the tests for tomorrow. You'll have to sign them out, you know. I'll tell you what I'll do, Major. I'll give you an IOU. I hereby promise to return 45 pages of classified documents by 0800 hours tomorrow morning. A classified document report will be required. You're familiar with that. Each piece of paper will have to be registered and annotated before you can check it out. Major, I... Each page. That'll save him the trouble. Major, perhaps... You better go on. You'll be late. You and the doctor really should... I said go on! I'm cleared for entry now, Corporal. Sorry, sir. We've got orders to check out all cars. Cleared or not. Well, what's up? Dr. Denning's been put under arrest. Espionage. <laughs> just brought down the master spy. Huh? All they got to prove now is whether I came in by submarine or black parachute. Oh, okay, give us your no spy, Alex. They said espionage. As covered by Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 793. Uh, subparagraph F, I believe, was the one Major Morrissey quoted. <laughs> Gross negligence in removing security information from its proper place of custody. Alex. Translated, that means I came back to the lab last night, took away some classified documents without checking them out. Oh. Oh, don't worry, gentlemen, it's not the blindfold and cigarette route. Just a security risk. Forever banished to the ranks of the free enterprise system. 
Well, if you make it a mistake, no, gentlemen, it's a far, far better place I go than I have ever been. I'll tell them how I worked on this best of all possible weapons for this best of all possible worlds. Bill. I was just remembering how many moments of truth we've had in and around a car. What do you suppose it means? <laughs> I'm sorry, Laura. It wasn't anything of earth-shaking importance. At personnel today, they pulled all the security files. I looked for yours. I thought I might steal a look into the private life of William T. Rice. And guess what? I found they never sent any papers on you. <laughs> well, uh, maybe they were just delayed. And indicating my interest in you, Mr. Rice, when I called a girlfriend at Anderson Electronics today, she told me... Laura, if you want to know about the private life of William T. Rice, why not come right to the source? Who are you, Bill? I'm me, William T. Rice, T for Tiberius. And after these tests? I don't know. That's up to my company. All right. We'll leave it like that. I probably won't be around anyway. I have a girlfriend in San Francisco who's always been looking for a roommate. She works in an advertising agency. That's about as far from Point Amador as you could get, isn't it? Have you told Matt? It may take a while, but he'll realize it's for the best. We were clinging to each other, beating ourselves with memories. It had to be. I can't live with the dead. And he can't live without them. End of revelation. From now on, the closest I get to the Marine Corps is John Wayne on The Late Show. Laura, I don't know if it makes much difference now, but there are some things that... No. Some things I'd like to explain to you sometime. But... I don't want to know. I don't care if you're really married or whether you're a Russian spy or a Chinese bandit. Just do one thing for me. If you ever get to San Francisco, call me. So Dunning's our man. Well, am I right? So another security risk bites the dust, huh? Bitter about something? No. Everything's safe and secure again. Not quite. We'd still like your report. Why? You know it all? Do we? We'd like to know about Major Mars. Denning couldn't be responsible for all the trouble and violations and petty frictions on this base. He couldn't be. There was too much of it. So much that the entire program is in deep trouble. Well, why don't you talk to somebody who understands the program there? I'm a platoon commander. Or did you forget that? There must have been an attitude, an atmosphere that fostered it. That's what we've been interested in. Yeah. Well, I want to know why I was sent here. I thought Major Marcy would like you. I understand that you got to know him very well. Look, I found Major Morrissey to be a very fine Marine officer. Flexible and adaptable. 
and able to understand the creative scientist and the pragmatic regulations and handle them both. Major Morrissey behaved at all times in accordance with regulations. Does that really answer my question? That's the only answer that I've got. I'm not a trained agent. We both agreed on that. Now, tell me something, Lieutenant. If I were to ask you what you were preparing for back at Camp Pendleton, how would you answer? Well, eventually, you'd have to say you're preparing for war, wouldn't you say, Lieutenant? You hope to God that it wouldn't come to that. And maybe if you're prepared, it won't. Now, that's the ugly fact of life. That's the kind of world we live in. And if you buy that, Lieutenant, you'll have to buy the whole package. You're getting a glimpse into our war now. The war called peace. This is where our next battles are going to be won and lost. In other words, let's save the irreplaceable scientist and scratch the Marine Major. There's plenty of them around. I suppose you're right. Suppose it was a choice between the two men. I don't have anything to report, Mr. Bardell. All right, Lieutenant. Now, look, if you should change your mind, I'll be down the hall in room 113. If I don't see you again, good luck in your career. feel like the commissary today, so... Uh... Hey, can I make you a sandwich, a glass of milk? Oh, no thanks, no. I, I just wanted to see you before I left. Oh, I'm uh, sorry you had to be here during that denning business. Uh, the man was a disruptive force, you saw that. I used to have men like that under me in the fleet marines, troublemakers. But once they were removed, the others conformed. Sir, <laughs> hey, Matt, uh, look. This isn't the fleet. These, uh, these kind of men, well, they're different. You know, I had people tell me that when I asked for this transfer. Some of them even suggested that I not take it. But you can't tell me that human nature is that different. You give men responsibility, pride in what they're doing, and they'll come through for you every time. Now, you watch. I'll have this place as tight as a drum. Well, I don't think that's the best way in this case. It's a Marine way. Yeah, yeah, for Marines. For men fighting one kind of war, but for those fighting another... For over 20 years, I've seen it work and give, give men strength they never knew they had. And it did the same for me. When I was on the line in Korea and I got word that my wife was sick, dying, I wanted to be with her. God, how I wanted to be with her. I couldn't go away and leave my men then, not while we're in the middle of it. I don't expect you to understand that. I, I, I'm sorry. You came over here to tell me something? Nothing, Matt. Uh, nothing really important.
Lieutenant, come in. Sit down. I uh, came to ask you, Mr. Bardell, what if I turned in a report adverse to uh, Major Morrissey? It would influence mine. Mine would influence others. And then he'd eventually be passed over for promotion. Retired. Probably. He was a fine field commander. And a brave man. And does this seem fair to you? No. But unfortunately, this is Earth, not Heaven. Why don't you sit down, Lieutenant, and make it easy for both of us? Major in? Yes, he's just cleaning out a few things. Come in. Sir, I couldn't just sneak off. I had to at least tell you who I am. Somehow you never were quite complete. Now I know what was missing. I came because I wanted a chance to explain why I was here and uh, what I had to do. Explain, Lieutenant. What are you going to explain, Lieutenant? You had an order. You did the job. Besides, anything you might say, I've said to myself a hundred times. Sometimes things happen to a man. He, uh... He gets stiff. Rigid and stiff like old bones. They, they crack, but they never bend. It'll happen to you one day, Bill. You can't stop it. But you can fight it. Always remember to keep fighting it. <laughs> 